名前以外にも覚えていることがある私は医者だ Well, it's official. I am now licensed! Grisha didn't just cure the plague if you catch my drift. So, I feel for Keith because Carla got injected with, you know, two types of serum. There's actually a picture of like a million sperm swimming to the egg. You want to know why you're special? It's because you outswam every other single one. You were the fastest, you know, you were the best, survival of the fittest, and you won. Anyone who's born into this world is special. <laughs> That's the Swanee philosophy of the day. You're the fastest sperm, congratulations. <laughs> you turned her against me! You have done that yourself. You will not take her from me! Your anger and your lust for power have already done that. How's it going, everybody? My name is Swanee, and welcome back to another video. Guys, the last episode, it, it did get me a little bit. It got me emotional. Kenny's backstory was just amazing. There was a great comment left in the last video explaining how the dichotomy between Kenny's good and evil side was so well done and so well executed and I just I have to agree and despite Kenny only being in the show for what 10 episodes he's surprisingly one of my favorite characters he's so complex you know he's an anti-hero he's a bad guy but does good things right he saved Levi he taught him how to survive in the underground, taught him all the skills, fed him, basically raised him for a little while. He stayed loyal to his friend Yuri and dreamed of becoming compassionate just like him. And honestly, it was really touching. I think the worst part and the, the most sad part about it is that he can't fulfill his dream because, you know, in order to utilize the power of the Founding Titan, you also have to have royal blood. And I think Aaron is a perfectly good example just because he has it, you know, Aaron isn't all of a sudden compassionate. Therefore, if Kenny were to take it, that doesn't necessarily mean he'd become compassionate. Which honestly makes a lot of sense for why Kenny reacted the way he did when he was eavesdropping on Rod. Because Kenny almost had this face of disbelief and he was sweating and it was almost like, oh my god, like was it all for nothing? I also honestly wish I dwelled on the philosophies of what Kenny was saying. I was just so emotional by the end that I had really bad brain fog and I just couldn't whip up anything. But the philosophies of what Kenny was saying, you know, everyone's gotta be drunk on something and everyone needs something to keep pushing on. Like a vice, if you will. Kenny mentioned a couple examples, alcohol, women, worshiping and you know in real life people use drugs I'm, I'm guilty of using caffeine caffeine i've been a slave to caffeine yeah it's another thing a slave everyone is a slave to something everyone has something that you know is chained them down and for me it's caffeine i honestly feel like i can't go without it i, I just have such a <laughs> i pretty much just run on caffeine so i'm guilty you know, I do need something to keep going. So yeah, I mean, everyone's a slave to something. Everyone needs something to keep pushing. Kenny was dropping some straight facts. And like I said, I wish I could have dwelled more on the philosophy. There was a whole lot more and I could go on about it forever. There was a ton of great comments that you guys left. And I appreciate all of that. Honestly, the love, support, you guys have just been amazing. I, it means the world. I don't sugarcoat it when I say it in the comments. And... You know, when I tell you guys thank you and I appreciate you and thank you for your time, and I honestly mean it, uh, which is why I like to reply all the time. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is I appreciate you guys so much, and enough of that. I'm, I need to get off my soapbox. I feel like I just kind of went on a rant. But yeah, beautiful episode, beautiful execution. Levi got his closure. He figured out he's an Ackerman. Yes, it is sad that he lost his, you know, his only father figure and everything in his life. He's kind of lost. It sucks. But the Survey Corps... Is his family and you know he said thank you guys and he had a smirk and it broke me the great moment but yeah the episode was amazing uh i've been cross-referencing my notes a lot i think i'm trying to accumulate a pretty solid theory on the beast titan it's just hard there's one factor in particular that's really throwing me off and that's the fact that the founding titan can erase and alter memories so my foothold on a theory is very flaky just because, you know, basically anything can happen, right? It's like, you know, is what we're seeing real or was this changed or is, you know, everything's lacking context too. It just makes it all very difficult. But in terms of, you know, correlating factors and taking dialogue from characters, I'm whipping up something pretty good and I'm honestly excited for you guys to hear it. It does make a shit ton of sense, although it's just, it's just riddled with holes. 
I'm sure you guys could pick it apart piece by piece. And everyone's been asking, who do you think the Beast Titan is? Who do you think he's related to? But yeah, I'm working hard on that theory. I'm cross-referencing everything that I possibly can. Uh, for something to make sense. So yeah, yeah, so let me know if you guys want to hear the Beast Titan theory. I have a really cool idea on how I could execute showing you guys because it is, you know, it's a theory. It, it needs, you know, the hows, the whys, the wins, you know, it needs context, it needs backing. I'm like, I'm talking a full-blown theory and I have a good idea on how I could execute that and show you guys, you know, what's going on in my head. So yeah, let me know if you guys want that and I'll put it in the next video. But yeah, so I'm gonna let that segue. I think that's a perfect way to get into this next episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> Two months. Little time skip. I mean, yeah, honestly, you know, you want someone who's humble in a role of leadership and, you know, someone like Historia who's actually lived, you know, on a farm. It's perfect. Quite the the task. <laughs> okay. Mika's a little jealous. It's cute. Interesting. Okay, so it's not a one time use. It's a handy ability. Yeah, it's like a it's like a Titan guillotine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little... Mm. Little nosebleed. Okay. Damn! I'm glad that we got a little bit of a time skip concluding that arc because, you know, it was a little bit of a slow-paced arc and, um, you know, a lot of big decisions were made. You know, like Aaron, kind of tired of being weak or quote-unquote weak. You know, I think he's been doing a fine job considering, you know, all the cards he's been dealt, but... You know, him getting stronger, Historia as queen, you know, she already has a nickname, and it seems like she's been doing good work. So, I'm glad that we kind of get, you know, a development time skip uh, before we get thrown into the next story. Marlo! He joined! He <laughs> joined! ヒッチにはいてないだとか。<笑><笑> Didn't read the room right. Although, the message was nice. He was like, you know, I'll wrap the scarf around you a hundred times, right? But, homie did not get the message. Mikasa was going in for the kiss and he just did not get it. That's funny. Okay, that is, that is, that is good writing from Isayama comedy-wise. I know he can make a damn good story. I don't know who wrote that, if that was Isayama, but that's good. 
Yeah, I mean, I know they had always played it up to where Hitch and Marlo are like a thing. And Marlo is very hard-headed in terms of like, you know, I want to do the right thing and like, I don't care, you know, how it gets happened. Yeah, he got the shit kicked out of him from that internal military police guy. He could have probably played it a little bit better, but... But yeah, that's really good. I love the pause too, where he finished talking about Hitch and Sasha and I think Jean. Yeah, <laughs> Sasha and Jean were like, bruh, really? Like, obviously she's going to tell you that because she wants you to stay. So Jean's actually romantically aware, which is a little bit surprising considering how much he <laughs> totally whiffed on Mikasa in season one. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been through some shit, man. We've seen it all. So we got some new side characters? Okay. Maybe that's what's in the basement. Because we already have a lot of answers on the injections and the details of that. But in terms of turning someone back into a human, and that would make sense too, because none of us have been to the basement. And Aaron's dad was a... Bro, Aaron's dad was a doctor. So, you know, antidotes, turning someone maybe back into a normal person. And Aaron's dad was a titan, so... Oh my god, bro. Hold on, hold on. I'm whipping up a theory. Hold up, hold up. So Aaron's dad was an intelligent titan. So he's knowledgeable about titans. And because he's a doctor, he could also have an antidote or, you know, something on how to turn a titan back into a human. Bro, which would make so much sense because everyone's after the basement. Erwin wants to go. Aaron wants to go. He's got the key. I want to go. Like, bro, that makes so much sense. I guarantee you that's what's in the basement. An antidote or something. Especially because Aaron's dad was a titan. So he at least had some basic knowledge of titans. And he's a doctor. Doctors work with antidotes. Like, bro. But when are we going to the basement? It's been three seasons. Dude, I remember back in season one, I was like, hey. Aaron's a titan now. He's got the key. Just sprint there. Two seasons ago. God, this is so slow. But to be fair, I completely forgot about the basement, so. Hey. I mean, fair point. All that experimenting and all that work probably burned hella calories. Is that Sonus? Was Sonus in the scouts? <laughs> it's him? Kiss <laughs> Wow. Dude, I... <laughs> Speaking of things I've forgotten, I completely forgot about this guy. I honestly thought he was just a boot camp, like, director, or, you know, boot camp sergeant or whatever. Also, I, I thought Hanji was saying that she was the executioner from hell when <laughs> this mid-card is saying that the actual device is called executioner from hell. That's... Okay. Wow, this just took an interesting turn I was not expecting. Keith. <laughs> She's scarred. The trauma runs deep. にはなり得ない話でよければ聞いてくれ。傍観者にすぎない私の思い出話を。オッケー。まさか戦っているのか okay.
ただ巨人領域には足を踏み入れた罪とはねわざわざ壁の外をうろつくバカがお前ら調査ハーネスオーマイガーリロックショーヤングブロディスドゥーンイヴンロックライクそれでここからどこに帰るつもりだブリシャイエーガーヒデナイジワー名前以外にも覚えていることはい、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと This is severe memory loss. Nanimo Siranakata Kono Sekai no Koto Nanimo Soka そうだバカみたいかそんなわけないだろうあなたたちはこの壁の誰よりもチューああちょっとキースさんまた調査兵団の勧誘かい<笑>ち違うぞカルカルカルカルカルカルカ選ばれし者でないとあらそうですかわおわお This backstory is あれば成果は出せる凡人どもの微量な脳みそでも理解できるほどの異形を突きつければやがて皆が私を認めるおはようございます。おはようございます。おはようございます。おはようございます。おはようございます。自分だけ生き延びたのかいでもエルヴィンの分隊はまだ死人を出してないんだって団長変えちまえばいいわあ特別な選ばれし者ヒースさん<笑> baby エレン死ぬまで続けるつもりですか<笑>もうこんなことは。おいしくカーリックケアをしなくて。おいしくカーリックケアをしなくて。おいしくカーリックケアをしなくて。おいしくエルヴィン、団長をやってくれるか。ああ、デスクワード、ミケイ。自分ではなかったというだけのこと。たったそれだけのことに
Yeah, it really seems like he got second place in a lot of things. I don't think... I don't think that's exactly the right mentality to... Wow, Keith really, really likes Carla. And Grisha doesn't even seem phased. Whoa, look at his eyes. It's not a hundred percent like Freda or Yuri, but like it's got it's got a little bit of a glow going. I see it, I see it. Wow. Damn. And he just tossed aside again. Okay, so that's that's how he got back to the what I thought was a chapel, but it's a shelter. Yeah, because he kind of just woke up there, which was odd. Wow. Mm. I think that's the mentality I was talking about, that inferiority complex. Mm. I, th I think everyone is special in their own way, you know, even Keith. Wow. Facts, everyone born into this world is special. Stop. Wow. He was the one that sabotaged the gear. Wow. That's... It's like a... It's a whole new level of low. <laughs> Imagine sabotaging a kid's gear because his dad, like, gave you the shit into the stick. <laughs> like, that's, that's, uh, it's kind of lame. <laughs> and guys, leave it to the mom to spit absolute facts. Is it wrong to not be special? Dude, that line hit so deep. I swear, I'm not a crybaby, but that, that was very moving. <laughs> uh, is it wrong not to be special? No. But I think that's the beautiful thing is that everyone in the world is special. I think it, being born into the world already makes you special. I forgot where it was or what it was, but it was a picture or a meme. And it was a picture of a sperm. It was actually a picture of like a million sperm swimming to the egg. And it was like, you want to know why you're special? It's because you outswam every other single one. And, you know, you were the fastest. You know, you were the best survival of the fittest and you won. Anyone who's born into this world is special. <laughs> you were the fastest sperm. Congratulations. Put that on a t-shirt. Do with that what you will. That's the Swanee philosophy of the day. You're the fastest sperm. Congratulations. <laughs> but oh my god. So, Keith was the one who sabotaged the gear. Again, 
imagine being so petty and being so bitter about you know a, a man that you sabotage the sun you know i really don't like the mentality of like you know who else are you gonna curse you know how could you have done this to me woe is me you know my life sucks you did this to me you know everyone's had the feeling of someone else coming in and taking the person that they like right you're in middle school you're in high school you're in college you're into this girl you're into this guy and someone else comes in and soups them up and you know that shit happens that's life you know, like, Keith, get over it, bro. Yes, Erwin was a better commander. He's more talented. He's massive brain. You know, you're, you're not, right? Grisha came in, better looking guy, talented doctor, cured the plague for Pete's sake. He cured the plague. It's tough competition, man. And sometimes, sometimes you get the short end of the stick, but that's when, like, you know, you better yourself. What he was saying to Carla is true, though. You know, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to, you know, stick their neck out for humanity, but also damn Carla spitting facts. Love my moms out there. Um, leave it to a mom to absolutely drop some knowledge on you. But you know, is it wrong to not be special? And then, you know, she says Aaron is special because he's cute and he's born into this world. And Hanji made the note that he resigned because of his inferiority complex, you know, which could ultimately be true, but wow, what a crazy, crazy episode. So Grisha doesn't remember anything, which is very confusing. I don't even think I can theorize just because it just doesn't even match to what it means to eat a person. Yeah, because I mean, once you eat someone who's an intelligent titan and you become the intelligent titan, it's just short term memory loss. But yeah, he really didn't know a damn thing. And it really seemed like it was a baby. Like when he was in the restaurant, and he's like, what are the scouts? What are the walls? Are you trying to say that there's no peace or blah, blah, blah? And it was like, oh my God, like he literally does not remember anything. Carla was the waitress. That was really cool. So that's how they informally first met and then formally met when he cured her. Um, you know, injected her with a little something, something, if you catch my drift. I feel for Keith because Carla got injected with, you know, two types of serum. You know, Grisha didn't just cure the plague. You know, you, you gotta at least give a little empathy, a little pity to Keith. Uh, whew. I'm honestly glad we got that flashback just because I just assumed Grisha and Carla, they didn't end up meeting until much later, maybe mid thirties, late twenties. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to theorize a little bit more on what that means for Grisha. Cause he doesn't remember anything i'm gonna think on that i'm hoping the next episode gives a little more context i'm not gonna have enough time today to watch it i especially like the moment where marlo was talking about hitch and there was that pause and they're like dude you idiot bro like obviously she was saying those things because she wanted you to stay you know she likes you you know <laughs> hard-headed imbecile bull cut and then aaron's like dude i don't see anything wrong with that uh, i think marlo's spitting facts right now my brother needs help man he cannot read a room but like I said, you know what? That makes sense too, because we've been making the comparison of Marlo and Aaron being very similar. Oh, that's dude. Wow. That is damn good writing. I think that was intentional because even in the show, they've been comparing Marlo and Aaron. And so for both of them to not get the situation with women. Wow, guys, that's really funny. I don't know the amount of depth Isayama goes through for just even the little comedy bit, bro. That's actually blowing my mind right now, you know, because the action and everything being tied together is hard enough already. Yet that tiny line, bro, that just has like a whole new appreciation. How long did it take to make this story and like the dialogue and everything? Because dude, that is such a minor detail. I love a multi-layered joke and that is funny. And it's so deep because again, we've been comparing them throughout the seasons. Wow. Anyway, I'm just going to get off my Isayama soapbox, um, even though it's well-deserved. But yeah, uh, I really don't have anything else. I don't have any other notes. I hope you guys enjoyed so much. I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It'd be greatly appreciated. All right. Hope you all, all have a good one. Thank you.